what about the, the, the second basic workload inside Office 365, which is SharePoint? Now, you mentioned that Quadratech was used in SharePoint, but you had difficulties with it. You, you, you said specifically that it was so difficult to navigate to documents. It is. It's difficult to navigate. And, of course, SharePoint is, in some ways, like having your own library. If you have a really smart, talented librarian yep. with a card catalog and organized shelving and someone who comes along and puts the right books in the right place on the shelf, Always. a library is great. If you have my house, then a cookbook might be next to a flight manual, might be next to a science fiction book, mm -hmm. and only the person who put them there knows where things are. Mm -hmm. And that's what we had in SharePoint. Um, despite multiple attempts to sort of wrap our arms around the problem and organize things over time, the coral reef effect takes over and things get disorganized. Just spread out and lost. But it's interesting you say that because what we see people doing now is starting to use, we didn't have a lot of use of OneDrive for business. Right. Uh, what we had instead was people would either share a document ad hoc by attaching it to email, right. or they would put it in a SharePoint document library somewhere and then had to remember, where did I put it? What's the path to it? Who did I share it with? Mm -hmm. What people are doing now is they'll create a document. Mm -hmm. They'll either attach it to a Teams object somewhere. So they'll put it in a team. They'll put it in a team chat, in which case Teams just magically puts it where it belongs in SharePoint, and yeah. it shows up in the Teams client, and the user never has to think about where she's put it. That's one case. The other case is that people will put documents in their actual personal OneDrive for Business library and then share them through Teams or through email or through uh, Skype. Hmm. So it sounds like, you know, we're talking about the two basic workloads, Exchange and SharePoint. Teams is knitting to the, uh, them together pretty seamlessly for you guys. It seems to be, you know, and I don't know if this is an explicit goal that the Teams team has, but I remember not long ago that the Outlook team was talking about how the first thing that people do when they get to work in the morning They'll get a cup of coffee, they walk in, they sit down, and they launch Outlook. That's yep. the number one thing that the vast majority of Windows users do throughout the, the IT, or not IT, but through the uh, knowledge worker world. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the Teams group is trying to dethrone Outlook. I think of it more as these two coexist very nicely. Some of the things that you can get in Outlook are also visible in Teams, such right. as your calendar schedule. Right. Some of the things that you could get through the OneDrive client or a browser are right. also visible in the Teams client. But Teams gives you one place that has your files and your chats and your meetings and your ability to just ad hoc reach out and call someone or start an IM conversation with someone. I think as they continue to extend the client, I don't ever think it's going to replace Outlook, but there will be some people who primarily work in Outlook because the bulk of the work that they do is with email and calendar. Yeah. There will be other people who primarily work in Teams because the bulk of the work that they do are less structured, ad hoc, asynchronous conversations with people in various groups. There'll be some people who have both pinned on their monitor all the time, but I don't think it has to be an either or. I think it's going to be and. Okay.